A few months ago, Adobe released an update to Lightroom. And in that update, they added a powerful new Denoise AI tool. It's really awesome, but it has one pretty big limitation, at least currently. It only works on raw or DNG files. That may change in the future, but for now, it's only raw or DNG. Now, what if, hypothetically speaking, you are a photographer, kind of like me, who forgot to set their camera to shoot raw, or in this case, their brand new drone, and they forgot to set it to raw, and they did an entire shoot in JPEG, and the photos ended up being pretty noisy. Well, no worries. I've got a workflow for you to show you how to get rid of that noise very easily. Let's jump into it. All right, so if you're looking at this and you're thinking, this doesn't look like Lightroom Classic, you would be correct. This is Lightroom, the cloud-based newer version of Lightroom that I use for all of my photos. Uh, I sync all of my photos, I edit them, and I manage them across all of my devices. Now, if you're a Classic user, don't worry because you can do just about everything here. However, I am building a new course called Lightroom Everywhere. So this is for anybody who uh, is thinking about switching to Lightroom, maybe from Lightroom Classic, or you don't think you're getting the most out of the new version of Lightroom, this course is for you. I'll include a link in the description below. All right, so here's the photo I was talking about. I took this with the DJI Mavic 3, and out of the box, I forgot to set it to RAW. So the thing is kind of weird. When you look at the metadata, I, the camera was at ISO 100, so you wouldn't think this would be a noisy photo, but if we zoom in, you can see there's actually a good amount of noise. It's not very defined noise, but it's definitely there. And it kind of distracts from uh, all the edge details. And I, I, I mean, I do love this photo. I, I think it's awesome. This is um, up in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. I just love the way all these piers and docks were kind of uh, bundled together for the winter. So what I wanna do is show you how you can still use noise reduction, or actually I should say good noise reduction, in Lightroom when you have a JPEG. Because remember, the Denoise AI tool that Adobe released a couple months ago will not work on a JPEG. So the first thing I'm gonna do is crop. And to do that, I'm gonna go to the crop tool over here because it's a bit wide. So I'm just gonna bring the composition in a bit and really focus on this kind of Tetris pattern of the dock. So let's see how this looks. And, and the shortcut for crop is C in Lightroom. So let's see if I commit the crop here, I think I'm gonna bring it in a little bit tighter and let's move it over a bit. Okay, so that's looking good to me. Actually, I'm gonna bring it up because I want a little bit more of that boat over here. Cool, this is looking good. Now we can edit the photo. And when it comes to noise reduction workflows, I have two types. There's a noise reduction workflow that if I have the raw file, and I wanna apply noise reduction first, I've got that kind of a workflow. And then I also have one where in this case, I'm working with a JPEG, um, and so it's a slightly different workflow. And the key difference between them is when I apply noise reduction. So I used to argue that if you had the raw file and it suffered from a lot of noise, get the noise reduction applied first. And in that case, I used Topaz Photo AI to do that by Topaz Labs. Um, now that there is the Denoise AI tool in Lightroom, I think that that's also extremely capable. And if you've got that, you should be in totally fine hands. But with JPEG, because we don't have the ability to use that Denoise AI model, we do have some, I guess, freedom, so to speak. I could still send it first to Topaz Photo AI to apply the noise reduction, but with JPEGs, I prefer to do the edits first. So I'm gonna show you that right now. All right, so we'll go to the edit tool here. Because it's a JPEG, I don't care so much about the white balance because it's not true white balance, uh, whereas with raw, you get an actual white balance. So what I'll do is I'm just gonna open up exposure a little bit here. Um, I'm gonna uh, open up the highlights and drop the shadows a bit. And I'm also gonna drop the black point. Now to add contrast, you know me, I love my S curves. So I'm just gonna open up the highlight region. I'm gonna deepen the shadow region. And then I'm gonna go ahead and open up the midpoint. And you can see if we just toggle that, I mean, look at what that does, it's pretty cool. But I'm also gonna add a little bit of white into the black point, or in this case, we're adding a little bit of gray. So look up here on the top left of the photo, and you can see as I bring the black point up, eventually it'll go white into the darkest parts of the image. But if you just bring it up a little bit, it'll add 
kind of like a gray effect. And this gives it that vintage kind of Polaroid look, which I think suits uh, the particular composition here. And then what I'm also gonna do is go to the blue channel. I'm gonna add a little bit of blue to the kind of black point, so to speak, to the darkest parts of the image, not too much. And then I'm gonna warm the white point or the brightest parts of the image. And you can see here as, as I go down, how all the brightest parts of the image here get warmer, but I don't want it that strong. I just want it to be just a little noticeable. And then because I don't really care about the kind of accuracy of the, of the uh, white balance, I'm gonna go to the temperature slider here and I'm gonna warm that up a bit. Then with the color mixer, I'm gonna take the target adjustment tool. I'm gonna put it over here, over this color that I actually want to increase saturation with. And you can see that we will adjust saturation. I'm gonna click here and I'm gonna bring that up and that's gonna pump the saturation of that specific color, which is blue. And then let's go ahead, let's change the mode from saturation to luminance. And I'm gonna darken the blue. I'm gonna make it a little bit darker to see. And I think it just, it, it kind of pops really nicely. And then I'm gonna park that target adjustment tool. Let's go down here. I'm not gonna do any sort of color grading for this image, but I will add dehaze. And that's gonna bring even more contrast to the water and the surrounding area. And then a tiny bit of clarity. That's what I wanna do for now. I might actually open up the exposure. It got a little too dark for me. Yeah, that's looking good right there. Okay, now that, that I'm happy with uh, altogether. But if we zoom in, we've still got that noise. In fact, the processing almost brought out even more of the presence of that noise. And again, if this was a raw file, all I would need to do is scroll down here to noise reduction and I can click on this denoise button. That's that AI uh, tool that I was mentioning during this video, but you can see unfortunately that it does not work with JPEGs. It only works with RAW or DNG. My only option would be to use Lightroom's uh, kind of legacy noise reduction, but I'm sorry, I just don't recommend using the legacy noise reduction tools in Lightroom. They're, they're not very good, especially when there are other alternatives that are so much better. So let me show you how to do that. All right, so I mentioned that Lightroom does not support third-party apps, and that's unfortunate. I hope that's something that we see changed in the future. Um, if you were with Lightroom Classic at this point, what I would recommend is you just right-click on the photo, go to Edit In, and then select Topaz Photo AI. But there is almost a little bit of a benefit to this route that I'm gonna show you. So the way that we can use Topaz Photo AI, or really any third-party app, is to send this photo to Photoshop first. Now, I've done a bunch of videos already on Adobe's generative fill technology using Firefly, and that relies on Photoshop beta. I'm gonna show you something here. This is for anyone who has Photoshop and Photoshop beta installed. If you don't have Photoshop beta installed, just skip to the next chapter in this video, but let me show you what happens if you do. So check this out. If I right click and then go to edit in Photoshop, which is the process that you need to follow, and you can see we are in Photoshop beta because it says beta in the top here. And this is not what I want. I actually want this to load in regular Photoshop. So what you'll do is you'll quit out of beta here. And before you go and you select edit in Photoshop, before you do that, you'll go ahead and you're going to launch the regular version of Photoshop and just keep it up over here. Uh, and you don't have to have anything open. Now, when you right click and go to edit in Photoshop, Lightroom will send the photo to the regular version of Photoshop. So that's just kind of a little trick that I wanna show you. And again, if you don't have Photoshop beta installed, it's no problem. So I mentioned how this is kind of, could be seen as a, an advantage to just sending the photo to uh, Topaz Photo AI from Lightroom Classic. And here's why. Because we're in Photoshop, we now have all of Photoshop's powerful layer functionality. So here's how I would work. I would first go ahead with the background layer, I'd right click and I'd duplicate the layer, and then I'd just click okay. So now I have two different versions here. But the real benefit is that now I can right click and I can convert this to a smart object. The reason why smart objects are great is because it'll preserve uh, the state of, for example, a filter that you use. And in this case here, the filter we're gonna use is Topaz Photo AI. So I'll show you what that means right now, but the Basically what this means is if you ever wanna go back and change something, you can. All right, so we have the layer here as a smart object. With that layer selected, I'm gonna go ahead and select filter, then go to Topaz Labs and select Topaz Photo AI. 
And so here with Topaz Photo AI, you can see that it automatically detected some noise and it applied uh, noise reduction, which is what I want. And if you hover over this little disclosure triangle, you'll see that autopilot detected low noise in the image. So if I zoom in and put the focus box around here, which is what we were looking at, you can see how much more of an improvement there is. That noise is pretty much gone. Of course, I can go ahead here and expand removing noise and for example, add more of that noise reduction. I can also implement a little bit of this recover original detail, which is I believe a newer slider. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna blend in some of the original image. Uh, so if you wanna bring some more of that original detail that might've been crushed from the noise reduction, uh, this slider will help. And I don't think it needs anything else. Like I don't think it needs any uh, additional sharpening. And as I kind of pan around, I, I just see that it's it's just a lot better. It's a lot more, it's a lot cleaner and less distracting with all that noise. Even if we just kind of go here in the water, you can see just how much smoother it is. And so all I need to do now is click on the save to Adobe Photoshop button, and that's gonna return us back into Photoshop. Now I mentioned the benefits of smart objects. So let's say I'm like, you know what? I'll zoom in here and I actually want maybe a little bit less noise reduction, or I wanna add a little bit more of that recover original detail. Well, I can do that without having to start over. All I need to do now is double click on this Topaz Photo AI line item because this is a smart object. So if I double click on it, it automatically loads Topaz Photo AI with the original settings that I had over here. You can see how I increased the strength. I added a little bit of that uh, recover original detail. So if I wanna add a little bit more, and maybe back off on the noise reduction a little bit, I can do that. And then I just click on save to Adobe Photoshop and that'll bring me back. And then all I need to do now is hit Command S or I can go to File, Save. And because Lightroom sends TIFF files as opposed to PSD files to Photoshop, we have this dialog box. You can go ahead if you want and hit None for image compression as well as what kind of layer compression you want. Now. Of course, this is gonna affect your file size. I'm gonna talk about that in a minute right now because this is an important thing to consider for people who are using Adobe's cloud-based ecosystem to manage photos. So I'm gonna go ahead and click OK, and you'll see here that it will actually make your file size larger. So I'll go ahead and click OK again. And now that we're back in Lightroom, you can see here's the original JPEG and there is the TIFF file. If you look on the top right here, you see that Lightroom is automatically syncing that new TIFF file to the cloud, which will make itself available to any device that I have uh, Lightroom installed and I'm logged in with my Adobe ID. So what's the implication here? Well, if we look at the original JPEG, you can see that the file size is 12.19 megabytes, which is not big at all. However, check out the TIFF file. The TIFF file is now 427 megabytes. Think about this. Your TIFF files and your JPEG files are generally massive, and you have to ask yourself whether you really need them or not. So let me show you the option of how to kind of reduce your file size if you are managing your photos in Adobe Cloud and you want to, you know, just not waste a lot of space. So if you want to be more conscientious of your file space and you know that you never need the layers uh, for this file, you don't need a, this huge TIFF file, what I would recommend doing is right clicking, then going to export one photo and then go to export here. And here what you can do is just ensure that you are saving out a JPEG at full size or full resolution and then all these other settings here uh, to suit your taste. But what this will do is it'll export the exact file with the noise reduction and it's gonna be a fraction of the size. Really, odds are you don't need that original TIFF file. You probably will never need those layers again. And if you really do, all you need to do is take the original file here, send it back to Photoshop, it can, you can repeat the process. So that's just kind of a tip there. And really quickly, what I wanna do is select both of these files and go to the compare mode. And let's just kind of zoom in here so you can see the difference. Like to me, this is a no brainer how much better this is throughout the whole photo. It just looks a lot cleaner. And granted, we're zooming in a lot. I think this is almost like 400% zoom, if I remember correctly. Yeah, 400%. And so that's all you need to do to get really good noise reduction when Lightroom's new Denoise AI tool is not available to you. I'll leave a link in the description below if you wanna check out Topaz Photo AI. It is an affiliate link, so if you make a purchase 
I'll earn a small commission and it doesn't affect your price at all, but it does help support my channel. Of course, I also mentioned Lightroom Everywhere. So if you want to check that out and you want to just know everything there is to know about Lightroom across all your devices, that link's down there as well. If you like this video, a thumbs up is always appreciated. And of course, please be sure to subscribe and click on the bell icon to be notified for all future videos. Thanks a lot, everyone.